Thank you for joining us for today's Bible study for New Macedonia Baptist Church in Newport, Kentucky. I'm Pastor Randall Baker. Today we'll be on 2 Samuel chapter 8, beginning in verse 1. would like to remind you that you can send in your gift or offering for New Macedonia to P.O. Box 151, Alexandria, Kentucky, 41001. And as always, thank you for what you've given. Thank you for what you will give. would like to remind you, if you would, to pray for some folks, uh, Robin Smith, Mitchell, and Amanda Mays. <clears throat> C.A. Griffith, G. Raleigh, Pam Baker and Millie Little, Joy Griffith and Tiffany Griffith, uh, the Wilson family, they have a lot of struggles within the family right now. All the sick and in need, whoever they are and wherever they might be, whatever their need may be. Pray for the elderly, the widows, the widowers and the orphans. Uh, pray for our church and our congregation, for the lost, uh, of course, always for the lost, for the evangelists, for the missionaries and all of God's people wherever they are and whoever they are. Let's go ahead and open in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for all the many good, great, perfect, wonderful gifts you give us, Lord, of just raising us up each day, Lord. We know that our movement, our being comes from you, and we thank you for it, Lord. We would ask that you would bless the prayer requests that I made earlier there, Lord. Bless them in your own big will, way according to your own will. Bless our reading today of your word. Bless our understanding of it, Lord, and we'll thank you for it. We'll give you all the glory for it, all the honor, Lord, and all thanks. We thank you for it. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray, and amen. As I said, we are on 2 Samuel chapter 8, beginning in verse 1. It says, And after this it came to pass that David smote the Philistines and subdued them. And David took meth egg anim out of the hand of the Philistines. So in that last chapter, chapter 7, we read where God had given David assurance of his kingdom <clears throat> and that his seed would sit on the throne forever. Of course, we understand that to be uh, Jesus Christ. And David's, but David's physical descendants, his, uh, his children after him and his seeds did rule over Judah uh, until Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, Babylon carried them to Babylon. Now here in chapter 8, God begins <clears throat> to make Israel into a great nation under David's rule, of course. And the first nation uh, uh, mentioned here is <clears throat> being subdued is uh, one of Israel's big enemy and Saul's arch enemy, and that's the Philistine. The Philistines under Saul's weak rule, and because of his disobedience to God, they had taken control over some of the parts of Israel, and they controlled a passageway uh, between the two. And, and, and some say that that, that name of it uh, uh, means for the is the same name as the city Gath. Another name for the city Gath. And the name is Meth Egg Meth Egg Amman or I am Ah, and uh, hard to pronounce, but. Uh, it means a, a bridal path or, or a passageway, a bridge uh, of the mother city is why I guess they think it's uh, Gath. But uh, it gave uh, Philistines uh, a safe passage and, and a way to get into Israel, and it was kind of protected. But David took this, and he subdued them. Now what that means is that uh, by defeating them, he, uh, he uh, dispirited them. They were, they were a very proud, a very arrogant people. The Philistines were so. So when he, when he took it, he dispirited them. He, got the, he took the wind out of their sails. <clears throat> and they were never, I don't think, a major, major threat to Israel anymore after that. We know all through Judges, you know, with Samson, we know that he fought, he fought uh, the Philistines. We know that some of the other judges fought the Philistines. And we know that Saul, that was a major, major enemy of, of King Saul. Verse 2 says, Then he smote Moab and measured them with a line and casting them down to the ground. Even with two lines measured he to put to death and with one full line to keep alive. And so the Moabites became David's servants and brought gifts. So then he attacked and defeated the Moabites. And that was the Moabites to the southeast. <clears throat> Of course, we know, uh, we know that uh, uh, the Philistines were there uh, close to Judah, just to the west of Judah. So then they attacked and they defeated the Moabites, and that would have been in the southeast, just below the tribe of Judah, and that was below the, the, the Dead Sea. Now David divided the people, and it's not clear if it was just the army, or just the military, or all the Moabites, but 
He divided them into two groups. Uh, one two-thirds of group, one group was all killed. Everybody was killed. And then there was one group left, and that was one-third of them left. And, and uh, those one-third was left alive uh, so they could, could make a tributary state out of uh, Moab, pardon me. <clears throat> and uh, that, that, a, tribut, a tributary state would one that would be pay taxes uh, to Israel. And, that went, and that's going to help Israel become very wealthy and it been very powerful, um, as we'll see as we go on here. Verses 3 and 4 says, And David smote also Hadadezer, the son of Rohab, king of Zobah. And he went to recover his border at the river Euphrates. And David took from him a thousand chariots and 700 horsemen and 20,000 footmen. And David hawked or hogged all the chariot horses, but reserved of them for a hundred chariots. So David had now defeated the Philistines uh, as to the west, as I said, of Judah and, and Moab to the southeast of the Dead Sea. Now they were to the northeast, northeast of Israel, way up high in the north to fight against uh, Hadadezer, who was the king of uh, Zobah. Now that's in the area of uh, Syria, and it's also uh, referred to as Aram sometimes. Way, way on up north, it's paid in Aram where uh, uh, Abraham was from. So Syria at the time was probably just a big group of independent states states or, or cities or small nations that made up that one big area of Syria. And David, he was trying to extend that nation of Israel, border as far east as the mighty Euphrates River. That's what he was going for at this time. And David captured a thousand of Hadadezer's chariots and probably destroyed them, I'm guessing. And then he took prisoner 700 of the horsemen and 30, or rather 20,000 uh, foot soldiers. And David uh, hoped or hopped all the horses, and that's that they cut the hamstrings on the back of their hind legs so that they couldn't drag chariots, so that they couldn't be used in war anymore. So, uh, now, David didn't take the horses. He just didn't take all the horses, as, as a lot of times they do take the, the animals when they go in, but he didn't, he didn't do that because the reason he didn't do that is uh, the Israel kings were told this in Deuteronomy 17, 16. And it says, but he shall not multiply horses to himself. So the king was not to, to get a big stable of horses. It didn't say that he couldn't have any horses, just said that he could not get a big group of horses. And I think that uh, horses, uh, a lot of times, that uh, kind of implied or, or uh, some symbolized strength in wars. Because all of the big other heathen nations, they all had big horses, big chariots when they would go into a, uh, to fight a country. But, but God wanted Israel to understand that he was their strength and not in war machines and not in uh, horses. But David uh, did keep a hundred chariots. And maybe he used mules to pull them, or possibly he just kept them uh, as, as, as you know, spoils of the war or, or as trophies from the war. Verses 5 through 8 says, And when the Syrians of Damascus came to succor uh, Hadadezer, king of Zorba, David slew the Syrians two and twenty thousand men. Then David put garrisons in Syria of Damascus, and the Syrians became servants to David and brought gifts. And the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. And David took the shields of gold that were on the servants of Hadadezer and brought them to Jerusalem. And from Beta and from Berathiah, cities of Hadadezer, King uh, David took exceeding much brass. So, so when the other uh, areas of Syria, namely Damascus, I guess is the main one, they came to try to help Hadadezer, David defeated them, and he killed 22,000 of them at this time, and there'll be more. We'll see there'll be more. David then set up garrisons, which are troops that would stay in an area uh, to, to, to guard their, their interests and protect their Israel interests uh, in Syria. So these uh, Syrians of Zorah and of Damascus were now also tributaries of Israel and David. And that's adding, of course, to David's quickly growing wealth and power. Now, God protected, it said, protected and he prospered David wherever he went, everything that he did. And David took the gold shields from Hadadezer's servants and the brass from some of the cities of Zorba. 
and Hadadezer's kingdom. And then he brought them to, back to Jerusalem. Verses 9 through 12 says, When Toa, king of Hamath, heard that David had smitten the host of Hadadezer, then Toi sent Joram, his son, unto King David to salute him and to bless him, because he had fought against Hadadezer and smitten him. For Hadadezer had wars with Toi, and Joram brought with him vessels of silver and vessels of gold and vessels of brass, which also King David did dedicate unto the Lord with the silver and the gold that he had dedicated of all the nations which he had subdued, of Syria and of Moab and of the children of Ammon. Ammon and of the Philistines, and of Amalek, and of the spoil of Hadadezer, son of Rohab, king of Zorba. So the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Of course, that's an expression we use sometimes, and, and we hear it, we hear it tossed about when some nations would make allies of another nation that they normally would not but because they had both defeated or, or both were fighting an enemy and one of them defeated they will join up together to be against that enemy and that's exactly what Toiah king of, of Hamath he did uh, Hamath was a nation a little north or, or a, a state rather maybe it was a little small nation but whatever they called those in that area but he was just northwest of Israel and uh, uh they had been at war with Hadadezer of Zobah. Uh, that, that, and David just defeated him, of course, we just read that. And when they heard that David had defeated him and made servants, had subdued him, and that uh, their enemy Hadadezer uh, had been subdued, Toa, the king of Zobah, sent his son Joram uh, to congratulate, to bless David, and to make peace with him and a treaty with David and Israel. So they sent extravagant gifts, vessels of silver, vessels of gold, vessels of brass, bunches and bunches of these precious metals. And David added them to the spoils of war that he had taken from the Philistines, from the Moabites, from the Ammonites, uh, from the Amalekites, and, and Hadadezer, uh, king of Zobah. And every time that Hadazir is mentioned here in the Bible. He's said to be the son of Rohab. It's mentioned every time. Uh, now, not too much is, is said of, of Rehob, Rohab or Rehob, his father, in the Bible, except that there is a city in Rohab in Syria. So I would assume uh, that he always mentions that the father of Hadadezer, because he was a mighty king himself, he was probably mightier than, than Hadadezer, and he was just a, a mighty man and a great man in Syria. And, and that, that made uh, that fighting in the ex David's exploits against uh, Syria, that made it that much more impressive uh, because uh, of, of, I think, Rohab was such a, was such a, a great warrior, such a great man. And I think the next verse, verse uh, 13, will support that too. And it says in uh, 2 Samuel 8, 13, And David gave him a name when he returned from smiting the Syrians in the Valley of Salt, being 18,000 men. So David gave him a name. And obviously that means that, uh, that after he defeated those the Syrians, that means that he became more famous or became famous and, and known all in the area for a great and mighty warrior. And David had just defeated the Syrians to the north of Israel. And now it appears that the Syrians in the, in the north had teamed up with the Edomites in the south and they had met, met David in the salt flats or the valley of salt around the Dead Sea where David and the Israelites defeated them and killed 18,000 men. We'll read a little bit more about here in 14 where it says, uh, And he put garrisons in Edom. Throughout all Edom put he garrisons. And all they of, e of Edom became David's servants. And the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. So now David had uh, uh, victory over the south. He had people in the south. He had in the north he'd beaten countries in the north in the east and in the west all around all around israel he'd, he'd taken control of everything and he put garrisons or guard troops in all these newly defeated places in edom and in, in, uh, uh syria everywhere he left garrisons people to control the people and to, and to protect their interests there and they all became david's uh, servants they all became tributaries to israel and just as it said at the end of verse 6, this verse ends with this, And the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. So 
the Lord was the one that made David a mighty man and, and a powerful and a, and a famous man. Verse 15 says, And David reigned over all Israel, and David executed judgment and justice unto all his people. So David now had extended that border. It extended the kingdom of Israel. And Israel was, was an extremely wealthy, an extreme, extremely powerful place. And David, uh, the head of it all, and he reigned and he judged over all of Israel. And many of the spoils taken uh, from that was probably would have probably been used by Solomon. And that's probably what David was doing, was uh, laying up treasures for David to, to use when he did go ahead and build that temple that God had said that the son of David, Solomon, could build. Verses 16 through 18 says, And Joab, the son of Zeruah, was over the host. And Jehoshaphat, the son of Elihu at Lud, was recorder. And Zadok, the son of Ahitab, and Ahimelech, the son of Abiathar, were the priests. And Zuriah was the scribe. And Benaiah, the son of Jedidiah, was over the Cherethites and the Perethites. Cherethites and the, per uh, Cherethites and the Pelethites. And David's sons were chief rulers. So these verses tell us the name of those that surrounded David, those that were in David's court or David's cabinet, if you, if you will, as he ruled over Israel. And up to this point, David's ascent to the throne had been complete success. Everything he did was perfect. God had blessed him in all that he did. He had taken all the nations around Israel and made them servants to Israel. Uh, they were kind of the, the power, the, the superpower there in, the, in that area. And then the Israelites, they all paid taxes and they were all tributes to Israel. And that made Israel the wealthiest and the most powerful nation in that area of Asia Minor. Most of the world uh, would be, uh, I mean, most of those things, most of the stuff that they had taken up would be transferred over to Solomon's kingdom, and then Solomon would have added to it because God had blessed him as well uh, to, to, of course, make that uh, uh, temple, as I talked about, and then we'll talk about that a little later also in a couple chapters on down. But uh, it talks about jo Joseph, I mean, Joab, David's uncle, was a general who was in charge of the military. And Jehoshaphat was a, was a recorder. I guess that would make him probably the secretary of, uh, of David's court. And Zadok and Ahimelech were the priest. And a man named Sariah was the scribe. And that was, he was probably, that's similar to a recorder, sort of similar to a, a secretary, but uh, the one was probably in, in David's court and the other one was in the, the temple with the priest and he was probably in charge of the religious writings and the keeping of the religious things and the teaching of the religious things but Benaiah, uh, Benaiah was in charge of the Cherethites and the Pelethites and not too much known about them either but they may have been something like a mercenary or a, like a secret service uh, branches of the military of David's military and it ends by saying that, that David's sons were chief rulers. So they had very high uh, positions. They were very high officials and held very high offices in uh, David's kingdom. Sometimes it's bad to uh, get family involved in things because, uh, you know, you let them get away with things that you won't let other people get away with. And we'll see that David's sons caused him a lot of trouble. They weren't, they weren't all that good of, of men. And, uh, you know, David suffered because of it. But David did some great things. David was beloved of God. God loved David. David loved God. And David uh, was tried to be faithful to God. And he, and he did mess up sometimes, just as all of us do. But God always forgave him personally for his stuff that he did when he, when he asked for forgiveness, which is what we're supposed to do. Well, thank you for joining us today. <clears throat> and read uh, chapter 9 and see what you can get out of it. See what God will give you for it. To, you know, very interesting story. The story of David is 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 very interesting to the whole Bible. It's very uh, it, it's 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 important. Well, the whole Bible is important. Everything is important, and to understand things in the New Testament of the Bible, you need to understand a lot of things in the Old Testament. And as I said, thank you for joining us, and and try to join us tomorrow, or not tomorrow, rather, but the next uh, Bible study. Let's go ahead and close in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for all you say and all you do for us, Lord. Every word that's in the Bible, every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, we thank you for, Lord. We know it's all truth. We know it's all uh, perfect. We know that it's all needed for us, Lord. 
We just ask you to bless us, to give us that desire to read and to study your word, and give us a desire to serve you, Lord, as we ought to. We know that you are a good, a great, a perfect God that is able to do all things, Lord. None like you, Heavenly Father. You are our, you are our salvation, and we thank you for that. Thank you for Jesus Christ. Thank you for this whole Bible, Lord. And we just ask all these favors in your name, Lord, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.